I'm Coach Brian, and I'm a health coach. I work with people with their nutrition, their fitness, their health, our busy lifestyles, we work on time and stress management. And uh, what's important is that we are going to be paying attention to what's going on with sugar. Right now is a, a big time that sugar is going to be in everyone's vicinity with uh we're particularly in the holiday season right now as i record this so there is uh halloween there's thanksgiving there is following that with christmas new year's lots of opportunity for, for sweets treats and other things to get in the way of all this stuff so let's jump into breaking the sugar habit tips to reduce your sugar intake it's it's a real thing. The sugar is real and it will definitely get the best of you. Today's agenda, we're going to go over what sugar is. We're going to recommend the sugar intake, science of sugar addiction, tips to reduce sugar consumption. All right. So there's lots of different things we'll be talking about. Sugar 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 that white powdery stuff that tastes so good and really hits our all of our uh, brain and lights it up so definition of sugar that white crystally type powder it's a simple carbohydrate but it uses sugar for energy in the form of glucose that's what it's broken down to in its simplest form of the body uh, excuse me, other than that, the use, there's no nutritional value found in sugar. So we can have glucose in our system to help with giving you energy. What we don't want to do is make sure that you are having too much of it. It's not the best, body's best form of, of energy. It's a quick, fast acting form obviously so we just want to make sure that it's within limitations so there's two different types of sugars one's naturally occurring and then we have added sugar if you look at a nutrition label you're going to see the portions the calories per portion you're going to see carbohydrates you're going to see sugar and you're going to see added sugar you also see fiber now the Total sugar is what's in the product itself. Added sugar is what has been actually added. If you look at nutrition labels, ingredients, there is a wild amount of different types of sugar names that it comes under. So it's not just you're not going to see sugar. There's like cane syrup, there's fructose corn syrup, there's all these maltodextrin, like all these different types of names to say hide sugar and its use inside that product. Now, foods that have naturally occurring sugars, uh, fruit, obviously, fruit has fructose and glucose that are naturally found in fruit itself. Uh, lactose has sugar in it. If you look at a nutrition label of fruit, you're going to see that there's roughly 50% of the total carbohydrates are going to be coming from the form of sugar. The, um, excuse me, milk, dairy, you're going to see all of the carbs are coming from sugar. When you look at labels, that's what it says. If the total carbs equal the total sugars that's all derived from a simple carbohydrate sugar now the, so whereas like the the fruit the fruit has roughly about 50 percent of it has sugar in it so added sugar that have been added to the food it's being processed in the processing part itself or even at the table when we can add it. If we cut up fruit and then we throw sugar on it, obviously now we have added sugar and we basically double the sugar content. Cinnamon and sugar on pretzels or sweetened yogurts. Yogurt is a 
easy, easy place to overdo the amount of uh, sugar that is inside that and that product itself. So we don't want to overdo sugar. We want to make sure that we find high protein yogurts, not sugar laden ones. Now even you'll play unfortunately you'll play usually has a lot of sugar added to it. Whereas even Chobani could have some sugar in it. They have some zero sugar kinds. A Danon, I find, has lower sugar containing yogurts. Okios and Too Good yogurts have significantly less carbs than a lot on the market. And of course, adding sugar to coffee or tea. We see this pretty heavy spread on in the marketplace. Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts especially. They pump tons of sugar in their drinks. Um, oftentimes, if a client says they've been eating at or consuming coffee at Dunkin', I always have them look up what is in the drink that they're drinking because there's I need them to see, visibly see, wow, 250 calories in this cup and it's all sugar. Yes, that's that's it. That's the problem there. Now, names of sugar. So I said, there's tons of them. High fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, honey, sugar, fruit juice concentrates, malt sugar, molasses, brown sugar, corn sweetener. There are so many more too. So if you see these things in the ingredient list, that's going to be your added sugars in that food product. Again, the more of these that show up, you can see sometimes two, three, four different names for sugar that's been added in some form. Well, that's not good. That's not the best food choice you should be eating and consuming for yourself. So what are recommended sugar intakes? Oh, here's our nutrition label that I've been talking about. So again, we have our servings. We have our, in this particular example, there's eight servings of eight fluid ounces. That's roughly a cup. It's 110 calories, zero fat, 25 carbs, 25 total sugars, including 23 added sugars and zero protein. All right now I'm going to go out on a limb, but this is a very cheap, simple carbohydrate. Probably could be like a, I don't even know if it's like a donut that has a bunch of sugar on it. Could just be an actual, you know, sugar candy, is is what it it seems and appears to be because of what it is. Or it could be a drink. That'd be the best, probably most possible way here. Looking at this, this looks like a drink. So with that, we've got. Total sugars is the amount of sugar in one serving. That includes both natural and added sugars. So the included sugars are added into the total amount. Now, if we look at this and read, it says that there's 27 grams of carbs. Total sugars are 25. That's implying that 25 out of the 27 are coming from sugar itself that is this is basically all sugar now if we look at a total eight servings there's over almost 900 calories in here eight times 27 so let's just round it to 25 for simple math that's 200 carbs and 25 so about 200 grams of sugar if you were to consume this whole product yes this definitely seems like a beverage that's crazy this is whatever this is this is all sugar would highly advise against this added sugars is the amount of added sugar that has been added to the food while it's been processed this does not include naturally occurring sugars So this is added. This is, if we look back on that one, this is the high fructose corn syrup, the molasses, the cane sugar, 
syrups, things like that, is all the added sugars. So as the example is, this nutrition fact shows 25 total sugars, 23 of it's been added. That means that there are only 2 grams of naturally occurring sugar in this product. So, how much sugar should you consume? Now, with this, is men should consume no more than 8 teaspoons and women no more than 6 teaspoons of sugar per day. All right, so we'll do an example here. Total, take the total grams of sugar listed in any product. So the one that we had available there, it's by four because four is the amount of carbohydrates per gram of calories. Four calories per gram of carbs, sugar. So 25 total carbs, that's how I got the 200 um, for the total of eight servings. Now, a four servings of this, uh, there's 100 calories that's coming from sugar in a particular one serving size. Six teaspoons of sugar is about 100 calories. Eight teaspoons is 150 calories. So just consuming one serving of this one cup is the amount of sugar you should be having in a day. Pretty wild there. How much do we actually consume? Sugar is everywhere, always easy, marketable. It makes food taste good. We know it becomes addictive and people want more and more and more of it. So Americans consume 17 teaspoons per day of sugar, about double the recommended amount. In a year, this adds up to 57 pounds of sugar per person. You know, that good old white stuff. And so if you had a pound of sugar, those bags of one pound, you would have 57 in. That would be basically a little over one bag per week of added sugar into your diet. That's incredible. No wonder we have some issues with our health particularly when it comes to sugar, diabetes, health concerns, heart disease, all things that could be managed from proper amounts of sugar. Where does the sugar come from? Well, in 12 ounces can of sugar, there can be 11 teaspoons of sugar. I'm pretty confident that one gram of sugar is equal to uh, sorry, the three, three to four grams of sugar is equal to one teaspoon of sugar. So that adds up quite a bit. So if you think of that, if something has uh, 25 carbs in it, and divide that by you know, three, and you're going to have eight teaspoons of sugar in your cup or in your uh, can of pop. That's a lot. Pop, soda, whatever you want to call it, right? <clears throat> All right. 12 ounces is considered one serving, but is about daily the amount of recommended sugar per person. Additionally, flavored yogurt, cereals, right? A quote, kid cereal. I'm not sure why we label it kid cereal. It doesn't make sense. We don't want kids eating the sugary stuff and be marketed with cartoon characters and stuff that's it's doesn't doesn't help our youth it doesn't help the future of our our uh, process either we have hidden sugars that are inside other types of food products food products such as granola instant oatmeal frozen meals to get them to taste better Granola bars, protein bars can have it. You have pasta sauce. Yes, there's sugar in that or ketchup. Dried fruit, obviously, you'd think that it was good enough, but they usually coat it with extra sugar on top to make it more enjoyable. We have canned fruits, of course. There are different levels of 
canned fruit of in its own juice to added sugar to it. Fruit juices are usually a lot of added sugar in there. I always tell people to eat the fruit, not drink the fruit. Makes total sense. Barbecue sauces have a lot of sugars in there as well. Salad dressings, uh, definitely. So these are just a couple of where sugars show up in everyday products that we see on the marketplace. So science of addi sugar addiction. I see this every day. People are addicted to sugar. It tastes so good. It, it hits all the right spots. Oftentimes, there's a lot of marketing and research that's gone into food products to make sure that they taste really good, that they hit the spot, that they get you to the space of uh, with dopamine. And that's what sugar does, is it? It's a unique substance that releases dopamine and it helps with potential for addictive addiction, period. And so most, there's a lot of studies on sugar. They compare them to opioids or cocaine and stuff. You'll see those happen. Those comparisons happen. Now, the study looked at evidence of sugar dependence in animals by focusing on binging, withdrawal, and cravings and related them to neurochemical changes that occur in the brain with addicted drugs. <clears throat> so they can see that there's neurological shifts in brain, brain activity, the chemical balance, and it, it simulates very closely to addictive drugs. Hence why we have a sugar issue in our country, but even in others as well. You'll see some, uh, you know, Coca-Cola is a worldwide big business because of sugar. Researchers found that neural changes occurred in dopamine and opioid receptors. So there's physical changes that have more dependency around sugar. And that's why when you consume sugar, you want sugar begets more sugar. And that just is what happens. So researchers have found that uh, that the changes that occur translate into human behaviors. And we find that humans literally act differently then. And we know this. I see this in my kids. Sometimes they just, their attitude and energy is not the best after they've had some Halloween candy or something. <coughs> Excuse me. Artificial sweeteners can seem like a better option than traditional sugar. I mean, they're low in calories, and that's one of the biggest reasons. Stevia, Splenda, uh, Truvia, Aspartamine, those type, they're hundreds of times sweeter than sugar. So they, there could be some potential benefits, but they also may make you crave sweets more if you're not careful. Certainly, if you're struggling with your weight, take going from a regular Coke to a Diet Coke could be beneficial because you're literally consuming 150 calories less of all sugar. So the actual calories do matter there, but it could lead to other issues there with that all right next up is how do we actually reduce sugar consumption well we have to make informed decisions from the get-go at your at the grocery store when you purchase things you can find and oftentimes nutrition labels or nutrition facts on what the product is and the amount of added sugars that are there. It's super important to pay attention to this. So we look at them and the ingredients are listed by weight. The most of the food ingredient is the first, second, and third ingredients are the most ingredients inside that product. So, but also that doesn't mean you look 15, 20 items down and there's some more sugars still 
more sugar. Now in the next example, we have a one cup serving size. There's four in the container itself. There's a total of 245 calories. So what we're looking at total fat is 12 grams. There's 34 carbs, seven grams of fiber, five grams of sugar with four added sugar. So four out of, excuse me, four out of the five total grams are included. And then we have, there's 11 grams of protein. This feels like a bar to me, like some sort of a granola type bar. It could be marketed as a protein bar, but it's really just a carb bar with fat in it. When we see 11 grams of protein, there are four calories per gram of protein. So four times 11 is 44 calories out of 250, 245, excuse me, 245 total. So what is that? One fifth of that serving is a is protein. There's not a lot of protein there. So there's a lot of, uh, there's some sugar to the carbohydrates there. There are fiber that can help blunt some of the sugar response with a little bit of that protein, but that's not a good idea in general. Swap the soda, okay? Water is always the best thing to drink, right? Especially if you're really thirsty or if you're chronically underhydrated. It's really important that you know and pay attention to the process of eating and consuming sugars uh, or water avoiding sugars and consuming water first because it's very easy to just drain a can of pop if you get really thirsty and hungry um, and, and oftentimes we again humans they mix up signals of hunger and thirst especially if you're not drinking a lot and I keep drinking to wet my whistle in a sense and keep a clear voice here as best I can. If you want something fizzy, there's so many zero to low calorie beverages on the market that you can get a seltzer. I'm a big fan of sparkling water. We had it in London when we went. Sparkling was delicious. It was naturally sweet and there was nothing in it. It was just water and carbonated water, but it tasted so good. That over the still. So sparkling or still, and I could have just drank that exclusively. It was so good. So having bubble carbonated water can be really a treat for you. Other ways to avoid sugar, adding spices to your food to enhance taste, certainly herbs, uh, add nutmeg to your oatmeal instead of brown sugar, pumpkin spice could be really good to your oatmeal instead of brown sugar, sprinkle cinnamon in your coffee, instead of sugar and those are really good ways so I, a lot of times people are adding collagen to their coffee as well so you get protein in your coffee instead of carbs or fat type creamers great substitution there as well now when we have fruit Fresh is better than canned is better. Uh, fresh is better than frozen is better than canned is better than none. We definitely want to have fruit in our diet. It's really tasty, and enjoyable, but we're always going to go for in water and natural juices. We're going to look at the label to make sure that the total, the added sugars are little to none. We don't want to see a big number there because it will multiply the amount of sugar inside a food product there, which we don't want. All right, make sure your your dried fruit also isn't coated in sugar as well. That's a really easy thing for people to do, marketers and stuff, to encourage more consumption. And we know that dried fruit is concentrated little balls of sugar anyway. It's like a raisin. Eat a handful of grapes will fill you up significantly more than a handful of raisins. When you have the handful of raisins, you're getting a ton more sugar, especially if it's been coated. Uh, you know, raisin bran has coated sugared raisins in it because they want you eating more of it. But there's also multiple more calories 
and a handful of raisins over a handful of grapes. We know that the grapes are full of liquid and hydration and they're going to fill you up a bit more as well. Cooking at home allows you to control what is added to your food. You are in control. That's a huge thing when I'm coaching someone is to make sure that they have some form of preparation and planning in place. They stay in control. It's critically important that they're making those choices, not allowing someone else to do it. If we absolutely had to, we can make our own food like granola or salad dressings. There are a plethora of different recipes online that you can find low carb, low sugar granola, low calorie, low fat, low sugar salad dressings that are loaded with maybe a vinaigrette based, lots of herbs and spices in it. So it tastes really good without the calories or the sugar. Next, uh, there's there's it's always important to pay attention to what you're eating because you might be surprised at what is in now, a lot of times people don't realize that pasta sauce has sugar in it they want it to taste better and by you know certainly maybe not making your own pasta sauce if you're an italian and you loved your pasta then you probably would do that most people are going to use a canned or a jarred substance to do that it's just but also you could just even chop up a bunch of tomatoes and pour an olive oil on top and voila, you got yourself a, a, a tasty alternative without adding the sugar to your meal. By creating your own meal, so you control how many calories in it, the portion, the sugar, all those things that go into this. So eating breakfast, start your day with a nutritious and filling meal that will make sure that the rest of the day doesn't get thrown astray. When you walk into your office or work, there's oftentimes way too much opportunity for you to eat food that's not the best for you. Like candy and treats and sweets and all that stuff are inside a lot of these the containers and stuff are just not good for you. So if you eat breakfast, you'll just be more content. I'm a big fan of eating enough food to get you to the next time you're going to eat again. So if we have some planning preparation around what it is you're going to eat, you too can stay in control and not just at a whim of whatever's around you. You'll be less likely to give in to sugar Cravings if you are full from a meal that's got plenty of lean proteins, enough carbs, and some healthy fats in it. So let's say a steel cut oats with a little bit of berries, some flaxseed, some nuts, maybe eggs on the side. That is a filling, delicious breakfast that will keep you in check and avoid potential sugar crashes later on. Now we have exercise, of course. It helps maintain blood sugar levels. It helps maintain energy levels. It helps improve digestion. It helps manage sweets and treats and indulgences from that. So if you're craving something, then go walk. If you walk, you will then pattern interrupt your behaviors instead of actually eating what is there you'll break away from that and give yourself that pause, that separation, which ultimately allows you to be able to not indulge in the first place. Of course, sleeping more. The less sleep you have, the longer you're up, the harder it is to manage calories over a 24-hour time frame if you're awake 18 or 20 hours of the day instead of 16 Okay, you can just go to sleep and just forego. Plus, when we're tired, the body is working harder and it's easier to make not the best decisions when you are sleep deprived. You're just going to crave more and you're going to want to, quote, snack. You're going to look for sugar and stimulants and caffeine 
to help power you through the day, avoiding actual food, and you're just, again, not going to do very well in that situation. And you are literally way more likely to opt for sugar as your first grab and go rather than um, than at an actual meal. And if you're not planned and prepared, then that doubles that double down on that even more. So waiting. Such a powerful thing. This is like taking a walk, stepping away, getting out of the situation of what influenced you in the first place is so powerful. So if you're craving something sweet, let's step back. Let's wait 20 minutes. Let's do something else to distract you. Let's ask yourself good questions like, am I actually hungry here? Or am I just seeing this visual stimulation of candy in front of me and it's driving this need and desire to want it? If you're still craving whatever that is after 20 minutes, then we'd always encourage moderation and finding some balance in the mix with this. Eat the good stuff. If you're going to do it, then just go all in. Say chocolate. Get some Ghirardelli chocolate squares. They're about 70 calories for a square. That's not the worst thing ever. Eat that instead of three or four Hershey Kisses. You'll be way more satisfied and it'll hit the spot way better. So higher quality would be important in that situation. Keep dark chocolate on hand. Break off a pre-portioned square. When you feel a craving for something sweet, you definitely want to make sure that you are aware of it in the first place. So wrapping up breaking the sugar habit. <clears throat> sugar is addictive. It hits your dopamine sensors. It drives more sugar. Getting it out of your house, making sure you're equipped with tools or strategies to stay away from it and uh, workplace and other environments during this holiday season, super incredibly important for you to manage it in that way. So don't just succumb to it. Find healthier alternatives that can do the job for you. Cook your own food, prepare it, plan it, and you'll f literally feel so much better as well. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this can help you break the sugar habits that you are dealing with and uh, that our world is dealing with due to just uh, overconsumption and ease of marketing.